2018 was a huge year for esports, with games like Fortnite and Overwatch getting tons of coverage on major networks, and some of the biggest prize pools in history for CSGO and Dota 2. Other games like PUBG have seen a sudden resurgence in players and viewers towards the end of the year as well. But for every success story, there's another esport that failed to launch, or just flat out died this year. So as the year winds down, we are looking back at the 10 biggest failed esports of 2018. Number 10, Fighting x -Lair. As much a case of bad timing as anything else, Fighting x -Lair, made by Arika, was created to carry on the legacy of both Fighting Lair and the Street Fighter X series. Officially launched just before EVO this year, the game had no real time to develop a player base, and was relegated to a side tournament at the publisher's booth instead of a main stage. Since then, the game has been relatively quiet, with only the Arika backed tournament, Meteor Strike, in the United Kingdom, drawing any real attention or attendance for the game. But with good reviews and a solid pedigree, there is a chance that Fighting x -Lair may still be able to succeed in 2018. Number 9, Quake Champions. Quake used to be one of the biggest names in FPS games, and then they went 13 years without a main franchise game. But Quake Champions was going to fix all that. It had been so long since a good Quake game had hit the market, the audience for the game just wasn't there, with the game switching to a free-to-play model right after launch. A few tournaments were hosted, with one even offering a $50,000 prize pool, but it just couldn't draw players to the game. The game's creators instituted a new Battle Pass system, much like Fortnite's, earlier this month to try and increase player counts. But sadly, it wasn't enough to push the arena shooter past Twitch's heavy hitters like Russian Fishing 4. Number 8, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. You can almost always count on two things when it comes to Dragon Ball fighting games. One, they will be incredibly unbalanced or just plain bad. And two, they will not be a mainstream hit. So when Dragon Ball Fighter Z launched with by far the best gameplay in the franchise's history and landed a spot on one of EVO's main stages that same year, fans were sure this was going to be the game to crack the mainstream. However, it turns out that EVO may have been a shot of adrenaline that kept an otherwise dying game alive. Since EVO, Dragon Ball Fighter Z has fallen out of the spotlight and been demoted to smaller events. And while a few big pros, like Sonic Fox, still play the game, it's quickly dropped to being the low man on the tournament totem pole for almost everyone. Number 7, Ring of Elysium. Answering the question, what if PUBG had snow? Ring of Elysium got a boost out of the gate from its free-to-play model, and this only increased when streamers like Dr. Disrespect and Shroud put the game into their usual rotation. They even hosted a couple of huge tournaments in Asian markets. However, Elysium took a huge dip in viewership and potential tournaments when PUBG suddenly realized that they too could also make snow maps, and put out their big winter update. With players and pros going back to the more established game to see all the changes, Ring of Elysium entered a bit of a tailspin. PUBG's renewed push into the Asian gaming markets also took a chunk out of their player base, leaving the game's creators to face some tough decisions heading into 2019. Number 6, Realm Royale. A game made by Hi-Rez Studios that looks like someone spilled a tall glass of Fortnite all over their MOBA, Realm Royale launched with a dedicated esports website and weekly community events not unlike Friday Night Fortnite. It was clearly designed from the ground up for heavy player engagement on platforms like Twitch and community-based tournaments, but the game's odd mishmash of different genre elements just never really clicked with players. It played like a poor man's version of several games all mashed into one, and not even monthly 10k tournaments kept its players and viewer base is growing. This will not be the only appearance of a high-res game on this list either, so 2018 in general has just been a brutal year for the company's attempt to push its games into the esports mainstream. Number 5, Battle Right Royale. The weird mirror version of Realm Royale, Battle Right Royale had a little more MOBA with its top-down presentation, and a little less Fortnite in its DNA. But both games were remarkably similar in approach, and both have that distinctive, Fortnite-like art style to their characters and buildings. Unfortunately, much like Realm Royale, this mishmash of gameplay elements also seems to have failed to find an audience, despite similar pushes for big community tournaments. Battle Right Royale gets the lower spot of the two based on its developer, who doesn't have the cash or the backing that Hi-Rez does to recover when a game fails to launch. So while Fortnite remains the biggest game in 2018, it's been a very bad year for the other games trying to bank on its success. Number 4, Smite. 
Smite is a third-person or action MOBA by hi res Studios. While never a massive esports hit, Smite does have its own pro league. However, that league took a massive hit when Energy, one of the biggest teams with the largest followings, decided to pull out of the new season. With dwindling prize pools, interest in the game at an all-time low, and the mismanagement of the Smite pro scene, other teams like Obey Alliance also followed suit and decided it wasn't worth the effort to play in Season 6. After all these high-profile exits, and with viewing numbers on Twitch at all-time lows, Smite has a lot of work to do to make sure that Season 6 of its Pro League doesn't wind up being a farewell tour. Number 3, Heroes of the Storm. While Smite may have lost some pro teams and is certainly struggling for viewers, Blizzard's entry in the MOBA arena, Heroes of the Storm, actually had the plug pulled on its esports life earlier this month. Blizzard announced that they were moving away from supporting the game as an esport, canceling both the 2019 Heroes Global Championship and Heroes of the Dorm events, and shifting the game's developers to other titles. The game will still see occasional updates and new heroes, but apparently the player base and the viewership were not enough for Blizzard to keep sinking money into the esports side of the game, making it the biggest esport to actually die off in 2018. Number 2, Soul Calibur 6. It's been a rough year for fighting games trying to crack the esports scene, and no game has had it rougher than Soul Calibur 6. While the game at least managed a little screen time during Twitch coverage of Evo, Namco has made a series of odd choices that cut the legs out from under the game's player base. The online ranked mode is incredibly buggy and full of people playing custom characters who almost always have some sort of giant, horrifying male genitals on them. With no extra stages and only one DLC character teased, followed by silence from the company, it just seemed like a lot of odd moves that only alienate the player base. Add that to no real prize support at the events the game even makes the cut for, and you can see why pro players have either ignored or abandoned the game shortly after launch. Number 1, Battalion 1944. Odds are you've never even heard of this game, so you'll probably be surprised when I tell you it was published by industry giant Square Enix this year. While technically in early access, the game launched to zero fanfare. It did so poorly upon release that the game was pretty much completely overhauled in a massive patch just a few months later called Wartide 2.0 and announced a $50,000 tournament in September. The problem was, even with this announcement, only unknown or brand new teams attended the event, and it got incredibly poor viewership on Twitch, meaning Square Enix may as well have paid 50 grand for a local event. No tournament has been announced for months after the September debacle, and they often have zero active viewers on Twitch, meaning not only has the esports side of the game died, the game itself is in a very dire situation. If big cash prizes and the backing of a AAA publisher can't even get your game off the ground, the odds of it making it out of early access at all seem pretty slim. And that's our list of 2018's top 10 failed esports. Let us know in the comments below what you think about the games on our list, and as always, another video is on the way.